Welcome to this tutorial on how to use the Warp Engine feature in the Tangent Mapper. We're going to use it to map some controls and resolve to the Wave 2 panel. This tutorial also applies if you own the original Wave panel. The Warp Engine works by recording mouse inputs made on the Resolve UI and saving them as a script. You can then map these scripts to the controls on the panel. You can, if you wish, create and edit scripts manually, but you shouldn't need to do this very often. Before we get started, it's important to note that you cannot switch back to the Resolve Fix mapping without first disabling Resolve in the mapper. Don't worry, we'll cover how to do this later, but for now, just keep in mind that you'll need to map all the controls you wish to use in Resolve. So make sure your Wave 2 panel is plugged in, and let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install the Tangent Hub software which contains the mapper. To do this, go to our website, select Wave 2 in Products, click on the Application Support tab, and finally select Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve as your application. You'll now see all the software and documentation associated with Resolve in the Wave 2 panel. The links to the Tangent Hub are at the top of the page. Download and install the Tangent Hub. Next, we need to set Resolve's control panel preference to None. To do this, in Resolve go to the DaVinci Resolve menu and select Preferences. Make sure the System button is highlighted and click on Control Panels. Make sure the Color Grading Panel option is set to None. Do not set this to Tangent Wave, as Resolve will try and compete with the Warp Engine for control of the panel. Finally click Save and restart Resolve. We now need to create a new control map in the mapper and associate it with Resolve. Make sure you have Resolve running and launch the Tangent Mapper. In the mapper, go to the File menu and select New Control Map. This will open the New Control Map wizard. Make sure the Select an Application option is set to Add a New Application. Click the Next button. Click the Select from Desktop button. Then click anywhere on the Resolve UI. You have 5 seconds to do this before it times out and the wizard goes back to select from desktop. At the end of 5 seconds, the wizard should update to say resolve.exe. If it doesn't, click the back button and try again. Finally click the finish button. You should now see the Wave 2 panel in the mapper with an empty control map waiting for you to populate it. Now let's map some controls. We're going to map the F1 button on the panel to open the primary colour wheels in Resolve. Leave the primary colour wheels open and bring the mapper to the foreground. In the mapper, click on the F1 button. This will open the control mapping window. Ignore the mappings applied to selection and just leave it on current mode. You can also ignore the alternate mapping section, but make a mental note of it as we'll need it later when we map the offset colour wheel. In the standard mapping section, Click on No Mapping and select Warp. This will open the Warp Script Editor window. The left hand area will show you all the Warp scripts you've created. From here you can edit them or apply them to other controls on the panel. Click the New button to create a new script and give the script a name. We're going to call it Wheels. The On Change section is where we record our script that we want to perform when we press the F1 button. You can ignore the On Reset section, as this doesn't apply to buttons. We'll cover this later when we map the tracker ball and knob. Click the Record button in the On Change area. The mapper disappears and we see Resolve with a red border around the screen. This indicates that you're in recording mode. Note, if you have dual monitors, you can only record the main monitor with a red border around it. We also have a floating record window, which we can move around. The Restart button allows you to restart the recording if you make a mistake, and the Finish button ends the recording. First, we'll click on the Color Workspace button, followed by the Color Wheels button, and finally the Wheels button. Note that Resolve doesn't respond during the recording. Now click the Finish button to end the recording. We're now back in the mapper in the Warp Script Editor window. You'll see that the On Change section is filled in with the script we've just recorded. 
The last thing we need to do is click on the Save and Select button. This saves the script and selects it as a script to perform when you press the F1 button on the panel. Let's test what we've done. Close the control mapping window and bring Resolve to the foreground. Navigate away from the primary color wheel so we can see what happens when we press the F1 button. Now press the F1 button on the panel and we see the warp script being triggered which will open the color wheels. Now let's map the gamma color wheel in Resolve to the middle ball of the panel. Make sure the color wheels are open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. Click on the middle red ball in the mapper to open the control mapping window. In the standard mapping section, click on no combined mapping, then combined, and finally trackable warp. This will open the warp script editor window. Click new to create a new script and give the script a name. We're going to call it Gamma Ball. Now in the on change area, click record. Click and hold on the center of the gamma color wheel and drag up and to the right as if you were trying to move it. Continue to drag until the green arrows appear, then release. Remember that Resolve doesn't respond during the recording. When you're done, click finish to go back to the warp script editor window. We can see the script we've just recorded in the on change area. Click on save and select to save the script and assign it to the middle ball. Let's test what we've just done. Close the control mapping window and bring resolve to the foreground. Now if we move the middle ball on the panel, you'll see that the gamma color wheel is also moving. Now let's record resetting the gamma color wheel by double clicking on it. We're going to map this to the dot button above the ball on the panel, which is the reset button for that ball. Leave the color wheels open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. Click on the middle red ball in the mapper to open the control mapping window. In the standard mapping section, click on Gamma Ball to open the warp script editor window. You'll see the Gamma Ball script we previously recorded. This time, click on the record button in the on reset area to enter the recording mode. Double click on the gamma color wheel like you're trying to reset it and then finish the recording. You can now see the script we've just recorded in the on reset area. This time you just need to click on save edits as this script pair is already assigned to the middle ball. Let's quickly test this. Bring resolve to the foreground, move the middle ball on the panel to move the gamma color wheel, then press the dot button on the panel. The gamma color wheel will reset. Now we'll map the gamma master dial to the dial above the middle ball on the panel. Leave the color wheels open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. This time, click on the top button below the middle ball in the mapper. This is for mapping the dial. The bottom two buttons are for individually mapping the X and Y axes of the ball, which we've already assigned with a combined mapping. In the control mapping window, in the standard mapping section, click on no mapping and select warp. In the Warp Script Editor window, create a new script called Gamma Master. First let's record the Gamma Master dial being dragged. Click the On Change Record button, and then click and drag the Gamma Master dial to the right until the green arrow appears. Then click Finish. We can also add the reset while we're here. This will be mapped to the Ring button above the dial on the panel. The Ring button is the reset button for that dial. Click the On Reset Record button, click the Gamma Color Wheel Reset icon, then click Finish. Finally, click the Save and Select button. Let's test what we've just done. Close the Control Mapping window and bring Resolve to the foreground. Now when we move the dial on the panel, we also move the Gamma Master. Pressing the Ring button resets the Gamma Master. We're now going to map the offset color wheel to the middle ball of the panel. Note the middle ball already has a gamma color wheel mapped to it. We're going to do this using the alternative mapping feature of the mapper. Think of the alternative mapping feature like being a shift function. This allows one control to perform two functions. Make sure that color wheels are open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. 
click on the middle ball in the mapper to open the control mapping window. This time, in the alternate mapping section, assign it to be a trackable warp. Create a new script called Offset Ball. Map the offset color wheel and its reset just as we've done for the gamma ball. Finally click save and select. We're not quite done yet. We need to access this control somehow, which we'll explain next. Now we need to add a button to the panel to select the alternative mapping function. This is going to act just like holding down a shift key. There's a handy button on the panel already labeled Alt. We're going to use this as our alternative mapping or shift button. Click on the Alt button in the mapper. In the standard mapping section, assign this button to be Select Alternative Function. That's all we need to do, so let's test what we've done. Bring Resolve to the foreground. Move the middle ball on the panel and we will control the gamma color wheel. Now press and hold the Alt button. Now when we move the middle ball, we will control the offset color wheel. Release the Alt button and the ball will be back to controlling the gamma color wheel. Let's take a quick look at mapping a script to a knob on the panel. This is basically the same steps as we've already done for all the other controls. We're going to map the leftmost knob on the panel to the temperature control in Resolve. Leave the color wheels open in Resolve and bring the mapper to the foreground. In the mapper, click on the leftmost knob and assign it to be a warp. In the warp script editor, create a new script called temp. For the on change section, Record dragging on the temperature control as if you were trying to change its value. For the on reset section, record double clicking on the temperature label to reset it. Finally, click on the save and select button. Let's quickly test what we've done. Turn the knob and it will adjust the temperature value. Press down on the knob and it will reset temperature. One final thing we ought to mention is how to change the sensitivity of a control in a warp script. For this we need to do a bit of manual editing, but don't let that put you off, it's really very simple. In the mapper, click on the middle ball to open the control mapping window. Then click on the script name to open it in the warp script editor. Look at the move line in the script. There are both X and Y values. If we put a multiplier before either of these, we can change their sensitivity. You'll see that Y already has a multiplier of minus one. This reverses the direction of the control and is needed to make the ball movement on the panel match that of the color wheel in Resolve. Let's halve the sensitivity of this control by adding a multiplier of 0.5 before both X and Y. Remember that Y needs to be reversed, so we need to use minus 0.5. To make the control move twice as fast, we can use a multiplier of 2. Setting the sensitivity is much the same for scripts which are assigned to a dial and a knob. Remember to click Save Edits when you're done. Let's save our custom map. It's worth noting you can create as many maps as you want and use whichever suits your session. In the mapper, go to the File menu and select Save. Enter a name for the custom map, click save, and we're done. If you want to switch back to the resolve fix mapping, you need to tell the mapper to ignore resolve. In the mapper, go to the file menu, select manage control maps. In the map management window, untick enabled for resolve in the application section, then click the close button. You will now need to unplug your Wave 2 panel and plug it back in again to return the panel back to the state which Resolve is expecting. Don't forget to enable Wave 2 in Resolve's control panel preferences. That ends this tutorial. It's worth pointing out that you don't need to leave the mapper running. Once you've finished mapping your controls, you can just close it. For a complete understanding of all the things you can do, Please read the Mapper Made Simple and the Warp Engine Made Simple guides. 
All the things we said to ignore in this video can be incredibly useful, especially if you need to create a complex mapping with different modes and multiple banks of controls. The guides explain all of this and much more. You can also watch the introduction to the tangent mapper video.